today on our show? News, 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 Lots news. Lots of news, man. News involving the poor kids got fired from Star Wars. News about the poor kid got fired from Deadpool 2. All news about people got fired and how everything worked out better for them in the end. <laughs> on today's Fat Man on Batman. Who's that in Poison Ivy's garden? It's Ken Smith and Mark Borgoro! Two Fat Men on Batman. Welcome to Fat Man, I'm Batman, I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Mark Bernard. Uh, okay, so we do have a collection of news stories here. We do indeed. Where uh, two of them involve people that were shit-canned from other jobs landing on their feet, mm. Mark. See, in Hollywood, mm. people land on their feet. They do indeed. Unless you're Mel Gibson. And even it worked out for him. He got an Oscar nomination. There you go. So hey. let's start with Miller and Lord. Yes, those guys who got fired from a Star Wars movie. Phil Lord and Chris Miller. Indeed. Uh, I would have bet my life on Chris Miller and Phil Lord. That's what you said, though. Uh, or the other way. I would have said Chris Lord and Phil Miller. Oh, yeah. All right. With a gun in my head. And I would have been like, oh, my God, I got this one. <laughs> it's <laughs> Phil Miller. <laughs> right and then like, you, but not in. you. Uh, Phil Miller. <laughs> <laughs> like, he just heard him say that. Uh, I'm nervous. I froze. Cameras. These two cats uh, were unceremoniously dumped from the Young Han Solo movie. Yes. And are responsible for the genius that is the Lego movie and the very funny uh, 21 Jump Street movies. And 22 Jump Street. Yeah. So, you know, when they got booted, everyone was like, come on. And, he, and these two guys were like, where are they going to wind up? Mm. And like the Flash? Maybe they were supposed to do the Flash. They left. For young Han Solo. I said that they would probably scoot ass back to Warner Brothers where they're beloved and, you know, fucking make some kind of rich deal and make a movie and be like, to mm. Star Wars. But they didn't do that. No, they didn't. They instead went to Fox. Weird. To do a giant science fiction movie. What is that giant science fiction movie, Mark? It's called Artemis, based on a novel written by Andy Weir, the same dude who wrote The Martian. I, th I thought, uh, who wrote... The screenplay for The Martian. Uh, Drew Goddard. So he didn't... Oh, that's right. No, it was a book. The novelist, yeah. So what's this book about, Mark? Uh, I think it's about a heist on the moon. Moon heist, eh? Moon heist. One of those movies. Yes, it's a, it's a lunar story. If throw a rock, you're going to have one of them moon heist movies, man. Mm. They're doing like three a month now. If you throw a moon rock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, bitch. And if you do, it'll be like... Sea of Tranquility. And it might miss <laughs> and then fucking head toward Earth. And after yes. a month, speed into the atmosphere like a giant fucking comet and then burn up to a pebble and land at Kill your a feet. bunch of dinosaurs. Yeah. So Ooh, I, went, I like I your went, version. I went a different way. <laughs> uh, they're making a new movie. Good for them. I knew it was only a matter of time. Talent outs. These guys got talent and shit. Yeah. And uh, they, are, they are hotly in demand all around Hollywood. I can't for... wait till they start giving interviews, though. Mm, that will be fun. Delicious. Mm. Those see? dudes are funny. They if their really work uh, represents them at all. Yeah. So I know they'll be able to very humorously handle this whole yes. young Han Solo thing. They, there will be lots of funny under the shade. They better be writing some jokes right now. <laughs> we got jokes, kids. For the press junket for Artemis. Indeed. Uh, it follows uh, directionless 20-something jazz, mm. chafing at the constraints of her small town, a female lead, Mark. Mm. Artemis, that's the town, which so happens to be the first and only city on the moon. On the moon. The moon. Simon Kingberg involved in this as well. Yep. Because they did the Martian also. They're in the Andy Weir business. Oh, really? Yeah. Which is a good business. I mean, the Martian made like $600 million. Like, it did. Uh, fuck off. There you go. A little bug on the table. Yeah. Hey, man, that's for us. I'll just kill bugs. I just, they, they, they land fine, right? They got exoskeletons. <laughs> So For a second, I thought you were doing the chew. You were like, I got water tobacco in my mouth, and I got to just... <laughs> if you blow an ant off a table this high and it lands on that floor, will the ant survive? Yes. Uh, it'll survive. <laughs> it won't be a happy ant. Do you think it'll be like... Ah. It'll just be like, my legs! They're all six of them are broke. No, really? I mean, that's a pretty steep fall, dude. Yeah, but those cats, like, they don't, like, they got... Exoskeletons, as I previously mentioned. They told me that in sixth grade science. 
You mean to tell me if I throw an ant off a table and he hits the floor, he might actually be impacted the way I'd be impacted if I fell off a mountain? I mean, I feel as if like the, the distance between the desk to the floor would be like throwing Iron Man off the Empire State Building without thrusters. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> you don't fucking pour ant into oblivion for no good reason other than, I don't want you on this table. <laughs> oh my God, I feel like shit. I'm sorry. Welcome <laughs> to humanity. <laughs> this is the show where we learn all sorts of horrible truths. Bad things. Uh, speaking of horrible truths. Indeed. Jim Cameron. Mm -hmm. is uh, making a new Terminator movie. Yes, and a bunch of Avatar movies. And a bunch of Avatar movies. Like, apparently, pr principal production for Avatar 2 and 3 started, like, Monday. And that is the opposite of a bad thing. You see the yes. spin there? Mm -hmm. We Whoop. like Jim Cameron stuff. Um, he's making this new Terminator movie with this genius kid named Tim Miller. Mm -hmm. Made Deadpool. One of the Up best movies kid. out last year. One of the best movies of the last 10 years. One of the greatest comic book movies ever made. Mm. Clearly, that movie has a style. A, a, it does. a voice and 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 a look and tim miller was all of that so now him, him, him not on deadpool 2 for whatever reason right creative differences so he wound up over in terminator land gonna make a terminator movie with jim cameron himself and that right. hasn't happened for a couple pictures indeed jim cameron hasn't been actively involved in terminator since terminator 2 judgment day so this is all cool and exciting news all cool and exciting that that's happening but it means that Jim's out there in the world talking again. He's out, the, he's out in the world doing press. Now, he recently, what, a couple of weeks back, mm -hmm. said some shit about Wonder Woman. Where He did. He was he overseas was, doing interviews for Terminator 2 and 3D and uh, said something about how whatever. I didn't think it was, think it was like, all that it's, special. It's good. It's but, fine. But it's no Terminator 2. Yeah. Like, Sarah Connor was actually the transgressive, groundbreaking female character of our time. Not Wonder Woman, whatever. And when he did, the internet went, Shut <laughs> the fuck! Like everyone got mad and shit. Know, some people didn't, I'm right. sure, but a lot of people got mad. A lot of pieces written about James Cam James Cameron talking shit about Wonder yeah, Woman. Like, Come on! Like what we needed was James Cameron to mansplain feminism <laughs> to the world. Well spoken. <laughs> and so Patty Jenkins even commented. Yeah, I believe we talked about it here on this very. We show. did indeed. I believe you read her comments that were in your voice, but it was her words. Yes, where she basically said. There's Fuck off, Jim. No, she didn't say that. <laughs> no, she, there's many different ways to be a strong female character. You had your way, and that's great. We had our way, and there's you can't tell us how to be strong and be a woman, and there's no saying that you can't be attractive and also be strong. And she wasn't going like, you're wrong. She was just like, right. hey, there are many truths. Yes, and Wonder Woman was never in any way played for sexual sort of lasciviousness. The movie was not from the male gaze, did not objectify her in the way that no. most female characters in movies are. No. James Cameron was like, no, hold my beer. I got this. <laughs> so James Cameron, like, he could have walked away from all that and yep. been like, eh, you know what? It ain't worth the effort. But there's a new Hollywood Reporter article. Uh, cover story uh, on the Jim Cameron. And so he sits down and is like, I'll stand by what I said. No. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Gal Gadot was Miss Israel, and she was wearing a kind of bustier costume that was very form-fitting. She's absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. To me, that's not breaking ground. Raquel Welch did the same stuff like that in the 60s, he says to THR. Why is he tossing shade at this movie? I don't... I... What does it possibly gain him? N uh -huh. What does it possibly lose him? You know... A bunch of people being like, hey, man. You know, a news cycle that you didn't need to have. Is this... A reaction because everyone always goes, hey, man, Avatar is just fucking Fern Gully. <laughs> is that maybe him going like, well, Wonder Woman's just, We you fucking know, did it first. Raquel Welch. Um, I don't know. It's a shame, man. Like, look, I was an asshole at one point in my career where I'd tell everyone what I thought mm. about people's shit. And now, if you notice, I generally talk about the things I like. And I mm. may quibble with little things. Mm. Like, hey, what about this? The fucking Klingons. Like about Star Trek. Mm. But generally, I only really engage with things that I, I like. If you never see me talking about things, chances are I've not seen them or I've seen them and I don't like them and there's no point in having the discussion. Mark likes to shit on everything. <laughs> um, I'm on but the other a, hand. It's a creative shit. Very creative Creatively shit. constructive it's, it's shit. It's laid out like, you know how when they make pancakes, put a face on it and oh, shit? Oh, man, it's great. He uses his fucking... Tom Carvel, the dot eyes, oh. make a nose and a big smile what you doing? Yeah. on the shit pancake that so he serves sad. you and he tells you it's for creative purposes. <laughs> it's educational, guys. And you're like, thanks. It's going to make it no less tasty. Yes, learn something from this shit. Regardless, point being, <laughs> I, I generally tend to, you know, mm. fucking say, I try to stay positive. Yeah. There's a point in my career where I would say fucking shit left and right. I said one of the things I regret to this day is attacking Magnolia. <laughs> because people were saying way nice things, way nicer things about it than they were saying about Dogma in 1999. Mm. 
and Oscar talk and shit like that. And so I got the screener. I hate, I hate this, but I got to <laughs> tell this story to remind myself what an asshole I can be. I, I, there was no tweeting, tweeting then, Mark. Mm. So it was on my website, on the viewskew.com message board. And I said, I just received my Oscar screener DVD of Magnolia, and I will be keeping it on my desk unopened as a constant reminder of what bloated self-indulgence looks like. Wow. The guy who made Tusk <laughs> fucking said that to Paul Thomas Anderson. Not even to Paul Thomas Anderson, to his fan base. What <laughs> a internet. fuck. And what did that do? Nothing. Made me look like a fucking cock at the end of the day. Uh, years later, do I like? I appreciate Magnolia more than I did then. Still mm. not my fucking big jam or whatever. But nobody needs to fucking know that. Nobody needs to hear me shitting in the mouth of something that other people fucking adore. Other people like it, great. If it's a mystery to me, now I'm a grown up man. I'm a <laughs> fucking grown ass man of 47. So if there are things where I'm like, this baffles me, why anyone would like this, I'm never gonna fucking tell you. You don't need to know. You yeah. don't need to know. You know what I want to tell you? Shit that I like. I'm gonna turn you on to shit that I dig. I'm not gonna tell you about shit that I'm like. It didn't do it for me. Fuck me. Fuck me in the mouth. Uh, James Cameron does not agree with that particular <laughs> perspective. <laughs> That's what I'm starting to get the drift of right here, man. He may not see things in quite the same way. Yeah. He likes to talk. He, and I like to talk yeah. too, but he don't mind saying like, yeah. no, nah, that's crap. And this is good. And that is that. And this is that. You know why? He's mm. made movies that have made billions of dollars. Yes. And so he tagged up on it after that by saying, as much as I applaud Patty directing a film and Hollywood, uh, quote unquote, letting a woman direct a major action franchise, I don't think there was anything groundbreaking in Wonder Woman. I thought it was a good film, period. I mean, I don't know. I guess, you know, I, I, I guess I've, I've commented on things where I'm like, I, you know, it, but I just don't know that I would ever do that. But it's, it's okay, you say one dumb thing in the press. But you know what, James Cameron, if you ever saw this, would be like, well, guess what I wouldn't do? Make <laughs> yoga hosers. And that's which one of us is smart, Fat Kev Smith. That's what he'd say. That's what he'd say. But it's also he wouldn't like, even say that. He'd be like, Fat Kev James. And I'd be like, Kevin yeah, Smith, sir. Wrong one. I was a huge fan of the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> of your work. I'm so sorry. Fred Gully in space, man. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I mean, I, I like that dude's work, but everything I read about him in the press seems kind of prickly. Yeah, and it's like you say one dumb thing, and the world tells you it's a dumb thing. And then you're you like, no, it ain't. No. Hey, here's my truth. <laughs> Double down. Super dumb. It's so you dumb know, and smart. But at the same time, look, he's entitled to his opinion. He didn't think it was all that special. But no. that being said, it's like, why share that? No. Like, honestly, what does it gain him? Like, maybe the respect of some people who are like, I hated it too. But yeah. the, the dudes who couldn't get into those Alamo Draft House screenings were like, you're right, Jim. But it's not like, you know, uh, people are like, hey, man, everyone should be allowed to say what they want and speak their truths and stuff. Yeah, sure. But like, if your truth is always to be like, I wasn't impressed, <laughs> you know, it's I don't know, maybe maybe turn that frown upside down. Yeah. yeah. Or You're just, the king of the world. Or just, yeah. Turn. Why not be that guy? Why not be? He was the king of the world. He told us that when he won an Oscar. Yeah. Be the gracious king of the world where you're like, even if you're like, look, I thought fucking Wonder Woman was like tepid or whatever. Just go like. Hey, good for them. Yeah, like, nice job. And hey, priming the pump for Linda Hamilton to come back for Terminator 3. Yeah, like the more the merrier. Yes, all we, like, great. Look how simple that was, James. <laughs> come on, man. Fuck. Anyway. In it for the ladies. Um, is that all? Can we move on? Uh, from that, that's all we have to say about James Cameron. Uh, just, the, really, it's like giving a chance to be like, remember you said that shit about Wonder Woman? Mm. Probably didn't mean that, right? He's like, no, I did. No, no, I believe In it. In fact, here's some more. On my soul, I believe this was true. <laughs> oh, uh, boy. But yes, uh, the last... We were all young once. Problem is, Jim is like way older than me. 62 years old. <laughs> is he? Well, that's what this is. This is like, you know, fucking... <laughs> Old men know exactly how the world should be. Let me tell you what I knew back in 1972. I couldn't tell my grandfather nothing while he was mm. alive. When I was working at the when I was working at the Roger Corman Creature Factory, we used to have all kinds of shit we say about the ladies. It'd be amazing if James Cameron like <laughs> wrote in to be like, I don't appreciate your racist <laughs> impression of me. <laughs> Turns his shit back on us. <laughs> Suddenly I mean, people are like, Yeah, why'd you attack Jim Cameron and Wonder Woman? We're like, We did it! We like <laughs> Basically, I've decided that Jim Cameron talks like Scatman Crothers. <laughs> you got to have the shine. <laughs> the line he said, <laughs> she got the, the shine. <laughs> you got to eat your oatmeal. You want to be regular. Do you like ice cream, Doc? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to kick the can. Oh, <laughs> another game of kick, kick the, the can. can. His delivery is fucking phenomenal. <sighs> 
All right, man. Let's move on to some other <laughs> some story where people aren't like fucking shouting shit. No, they're people. they're just spending a shit ton of money. Yeah, let's talk about this. So, uh, Variety uh, had a report. Uh, I think this this week. If did you not work today. there? Never worked at Variety. Hollywood Reporter was. You did Hollywood. Right? You was edited Hollywood Reporter, right? I was I was a senior editor over there. You would have been the guy who's like somebody hands you this Jim Cameron story, like cha ching. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh shit. What do we got? Put that shit on Front the cover. page. <laughs> you here's the poll quote. Damn straight, I said it, and I'll say it again. <laughs> That's right. They deserve to die and hope to burn in hell. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, you did that one. You did EW. Uh, did that one. EW Playboy. LA Times. LA Times. Okay, so you haven't worked for Bride. Have not. You know, cats. Over not there? too late. I do. Maureen. <laughs> not too late. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta bat the cycle. Uh, I know Maureen Ryan is their TV critic over there, who is super smart. Um, and she was actually one of the reporters on the story, which was talking about how much TV budgets have gone up. Yeah. And that Game of Thrones specifically, in the last season, there are going to be six episodes. Each episode will be There's about only six episodes left to Game of Thrones. Pretty much. Before the spinoffs begin. Before the spinoffs begin. Uh, each episode of those six will cost $15 million each. So six times 15 is 90? Yep. So you're getting six hours of Game of Thrones for $90 million? Yes. Show me. We let, we're here in, and tell them we're here in Hollywood mm. Hills. Here in Hollywood Hills. Okay, right? Mm. You can't see Offset, but over there, Hollywood. Mm. Over there, yep. the hills and Burbank. Mm. So studios there, studios there. You show me one fucking studio can make a six-hour movie with dragons in it that you <laughs> give a fuck about with a great story for $90 million. That's amazing to me. I mean, that's yeah. fucking, that's insane. That's what a great price. And now in a world where it's like, you don't got to make prints and shit like that in movie biz. Like, yeah, you still got marketing and shit. But that's, that's, that figure doesn't even include marketing. It's not, even, mm. it's not HBO going like, and then, you know, this is what we spend on fucking ad buys for it or anything. That's just literally making the production. Yep. Six hours of television. Mm hmm. Some of which will have dragons in it. A lot of which has special effects. Dead, yes. An army of fucking dead people. I yep. think that's a steal. Maybe I'm crazy. Call me fucking crazy, but that's that seems cheap to me. It uh, when you look at it that way, you're absolutely right. Yes, <clears throat> I've looked through it, a different prism. What when you, you look at it in comparison to every other TV show on the planet, um, that is more money that's ever been spent on a television show. My hand is raised. Yes, sir. You can't compare this to every other show on the planet. This may be the greatest television experience of our lifetime. And I'm not saying mm. it won't get better down the run, mm. down the line, but right now. What's better than this? So fuck the standard of everything else or what other shit costs. This is a phenomenon unlike anything else. Absolutely. The thing of it is, though, if this was a $90 million movie that went six hours, you broke it into three two-hour movies. Yes. You could make $200 million. You could make a billion dollars yes. off of those movies. Yes. It is unclear what the revenue stream for HBO Game of Thrones is. They need more... Uh, subscribers. subscribers like that's what it is they are being pirated at an ungodly rate right DVD sales are have always been for the last 10 years trickling to a bare minimum almost not existing almost not they sell strong on iTunes when they put their series up right for the season but it's it's one of those like yes it's absolutely like how are they gonna make the money back how do they make the money back how does anybody make the money back how does Netflix make their money back is it subscribers entirely Netflix is spending they spent six million dollars an episode on Stranger Things, the first season. They're spending yeah. eight million an episode for the season two. They spent ten million an episode on The Crown. The two million between Stranger Things seasons got to be raises. Probably raises. Probably a little bit of effects work. Like it's going to be a bigger show, I think, this year right. than it was last year. But all of these companies are spending all of this money on all of this content, which looks great. Like none of it looks bad. But it becomes... How much Westworld cost? Anybody know? Um, Westworld, I think, was ooh, between 8 and $10 million. That yeah, episode. that looked expensive. Looked expensive. You know, and, they, and fucking shooting it up in Santa Clarita, in the heat, where it's like a ton of it is exteriors, and not even counting the we got to build a fucking futuristic bunker. Yeah. Like, that's... Yeah, that's money. Yeah. That's money. It's all money. And the, the thing of it is, is if every one of these streaming platforms is spending this much money on stuff, if Hulu was spending, you know, $8 million an episode on whatever, Stars is spending $8 million on American Gods, even fucking TNT's Will, that period drama starring young Will Shakespeare, $5 million, $6 million an episode on TNT wow. for a show that got canceled after the first season. I think the CW shows are between <clears throat> three and four pop, too. I mean, that's kind of about what Network is. Network is about, you know, between two and four million dollars. What does Scandal episode. cost? Anybody know? I don't know. Seems I mean, like a cheap show, right? It's just people talking. Yeah, kind of like it's not a lot of work. Crashing planes, but it's yeah. one of those a talent. 
over oh, well, five yeah. years. Well, like, the creator of the show must get. Uh, yeah, Sean, Shonda gets her piece. I'm sure that she, Olivia Pope is not <laughs> begging for money. But when, how long can this sustain? How long can television be produced at this cost? Let me ask you something. You talk about TV bubble here? Mm -hmm. Give him a single. This is important. It's if every single, single, single. Tell him, tell him about the bubble, Mark. There, Warn him, Jorel. There are something like 400 scripted shows on TV now, more than there've ever been in the history of television. Each episode of these shows are costing more and more and more on platforms that are not driven by advertising. They're driven by subscribers. They're driven by traffic, but they're not driven by Procter and Gamble is buying half an hour of this show to sell soap. That's what TV is. At its core, it's the space between commercials. Yes. Broadcast TV. Cable TV, a little bit different. Pay cable, absolutely different. Streaming, different even still. So for how much longer can these, this much money be spent on content before everybody realizes, oh shit, my CBS All Access app is not bringing in the traffic we wanted it to. We can't monetize this much traffic to pay for the content we're putting on it. And nobody knows how long it'll last. Nobody knows how much longer we'll be living in this rarefied air of everybody gets a show and every show costs $100 million to make. Mm. Except Comic Book Man, which returns October 22nd. Doesn't cost that much to make. Seven <laughs> years running. Um, yeah, TV, yeah. man, is a baffling business. You're right. When you put it through that prism, how are they going to make that money back? They just, they it's have to get new subscribers. Yeah. And like how many people. If and you're right. They're hemorrhaging subscribers because people are like, I'm going to watch this shit on for free. <laughs> yeah. So like, many, they, they show you stats all the time. Like millions of people watching this shit for free. Yeah. Like the most pirated show in history is Game of Thrones. Not even counting the people like, can I use your HBO now? Mm -hmm. Log in and shit. Yeah. They're not paying for it either. So it's, it's, I mean, it's a glorious time to be making television. This is all your fault. You yeah. fucking people that refuse to pay for a show as good as Game of Thrones, man. You're the... Are they the problem? Um, no, I don't think so. You're not the problem. But you're not helping. <laughs> I think it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a gold rush. I mean, we saw it with the, the OTT networks. Remember when everybody was like, we're going on like YouTube Red and we're doing stuff and you just pay to download they were dancing. whatever. They were dancing. And ultimately, nobody kind of wanted to pay for that stuff. Look, I... I Luckily enough, I got a job where I can write off the cost of all these app channels because it's like, hey, man, I'm in the entertainment business. I got to do research. Got to be familiar with what's out there. Mm. So, but that being said, I got a lot of app channels. Got myself a Netflix. Got myself a Hulu. Mm -hmm. Got myself a CBS Access now. Got myself Amazon. Mm -hmm. Got myself, what else have I <clears> joined <throat> up? Screen Junkies. That counts, but mm -hmm. I count it. Sure, you're paying for it. Uh, Babblevision.com. Yes, mm -hmm. I signed up for my own fucking service so I can watch my show on my phone. <laughs> um, but that's a lot. That's a lot. Nine bucks, ten bucks a pop. Like right there, that's 50, 60 bones. Yeah, Disney's about to start up there. So you and I want that. that. You want and that. And I want one. the CW or Warner Brothers or the DC app channel, whatever they're talking about, where mm -hmm. they're going to put all the CW shows and all the cartoons and shit. Yeah. Like this just makes sense, and I want it. I want it all. But you're right. There's going to come a point where... Look, I can afford, I work my ass off and I, I, you know, I work my ass off, but I'm out working a lot. Sure. And, and making that money so I can buy many app channels. <laughs> but what happens to the person that's just like, I got one job or I got no job. I can't afford no app channel. Yeah. It's like cable was too expensive. I had shit that I didn't watch. So I got rid of cable, but now I got to do all of this other shit. I'm still spending 150 bucks a month to get what I used to get. And one check. Now I'm sending out eight checks. What if it was cheaper? What if instead of nine ninety nine, it was like four ninety nine, five bucks? I mean, people. Why won't they let us live in a five dollar world? Because I got ten million dollar an episode budgets for these things. They, this is the problem, right? That's the problem. I was just praising fifteen million bucks, <laughs> and then I'm like, hey, how come this ain't cheaper? And you're like, because you just. Uh, <laughs> you're the problem. Well, Floyd, I tell you, this is. Uh, it could be an issue. It could be an issue. It's not an issue Something yet. In our continuing expose of the TV bubble that we'll be looking at. From Indeed, time to time. like for right now. Everybody seems happy to spend this money. It's a gold rush for content and, and eyeballs. But it's fucking Krypton before the explosion is what he's saying. <laughs> yes, it is. That's right. Yes, it Everyone is. Everyone having a good time. They're like, we don't need to have sex anymore. Let's birth the babies in chambers mm. and shit. It's fine. There's only a little bit of crime. I'm going to send those to the Phantom Zone. It's okay. Science has led us all. Mm. Sci doctors and, and people. Mm. That What is that rumbling? <laughs> Um, all right, man. So we'll keep an eye on us. Is well, that all the news we got? That's all the news we got. That's all the, and we, well, we got a live show coming up. 
Fuck yeah, we got a live show, man. What are you doing? Go buy tickets right now. Go to csmod.com. C I can't even say my own mm. address. Say it for me. csmod.com. There, I said it. Um, and buy tickets for Fat Man on Batman live. 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 October right. 10th. And, and October 17th. And the 17th. Scum Where? and Villainy. Scum and Villainy. You watched the long episode. Hey, man, that long ass episode we did, two and a mm-hmm. half hours that we recorded as Scum and Villainy, that's a game changer for us. Mm. We threw it up on the, on the channel. You know, it's one thing you do 10 minute, 20 minute shows, you get 50,000 views. 50,000 people sat through two and a half hours of us standing me on a fucking bar. <laughs> I felt like we were in cheers for a minute. <laughs> A <laughs> big audience, and we were at a bar. And he had perfect fucking hair, just oh, like Sam. So, so, yes, go to cspot.com, get tickets, man. Join us at Scum and Villainy Cantina right there on Hollywood Boulevard. Oh, no, it's Los a nice, Angeles. nice spot. But you got to act fast because it's not a lot of seats in that house, and they yeah. sold out quick last time. It did so. sell out very quick last time. And if you watch that show, you see it's a good fucking time. And we talk, and then you guys talk. And yeah. We all sit around, get drunk, and, well, you guys get drunk. I'm blazed. And, uh, <laughs> and, and talk about shit that we love. An environment is crazy. Mm. Sit around a bar and talk about geek shit. Like, unheard of. Wonderful. Who knew? Who knew this was a job you could have? Yes. So go buy them tickets, man. But yeah, that's yeah. all the news we got for you for now. First taste was free. Mm. Next taste is you got to buy them tickets. <laughs> but then, you know, if you can't get out here, you'll be able to see the show. See? Right here. Taking care of you. Yeah, man. Got you all ends. And you know what we're going to do? Quiz next week. Yes. One. Quiz with prizes. Prize I get a lot of shit. Like, people give me shit all the time. So it's like I could give away prizes. Not like, Kev, this is something meaningful to me. You know, people give you free shit. Like, here's a Batman right. something. <laughs> so, you know, we could bring it in and fucking have the quiz. Whoever wins, bam. Prize. You get an ad at from Star Wars. Shit like mm. that. Um, so go buy tickets. It's going to be a good time, man. But that's Excellent. it. That's all the news we got for you. Fuck yeah. off. For Fat Man, I'm Batman. I've been Kevin Smith. Mark Bernard. Come back next time. Same Fat Time. Same Fat Channel. Podcast.com or YouTube.com slash Kevin Smith.